this shot could absolutely revolutionize your pickleball game. And yes, I'm talking all things the backhand slice drop. This shot is absolutely phenomenal and it's really advantageous. So today we're gonna to be going through why it's advantageous, how to do it, proper form and technique, and if you stay to the end, you'll see a drill that will help you practice to become a master at the backhand slice. So the first thing I wanna talk about is why the backhand slice drop is a really aggressive drop. And a lot of that has to do with the spin that you're putting on the ball. When you're using that backhand slice drop, you're putting a lot of backspin on the ball, meaning that ball is spinning towards you. Okay, so what happens when the ball has backspin on it and it crosses over the net, that bounce on the other side is really hard to handle for your opponent because it's not bouncing towards them. It's more of a subdued bounce, so they have to move more towards the ball, and it also doesn't bounce as high because of the spin on it. That's why the backhand slice drop is such an aggressive drop because it really can confuse your opponents on the other side. Another reason why this shot is really awesome is because it actually has a little bit more loft on it, okay? I always say loft stands for lots of freaking time. And the reason why loft is good on a drop shot is because your whole goal with your drop shot is to move from the baseline all the way to the kitchen. And the way to do that is to have some time on it, okay? So um, the backhand slice drop has a little bit more loft, AKA it gives you a little bit more time to start getting towards the kitchen. The last reason why I really like this shot is because this shot provides you a little bit more reach. So for example, if I'm hitting a drop shot and I'm only using my two-hander, I can't really go that far. What's awesome about the one-handed slice drop is my reach is so much further than if I'm stuck holding two hands. So if, for example, I get a really difficult return that pulls me out wide to my left, which is my backhand side, then I'm gonna use this one-handed slice drop because I have so much more reach than if I were to put two hands on the paddle. So that's another great reason why this drop shot is so good. So next I wanna go through the foundational techniques to hitting this shot. So something that you really need to keep in mind when you're hitting this shot is that you need to have a locked wrist, okay? So don't have a floppy wrist or try to be wristy with the spin. All the spin comes from your shoulder, your big muscles pulling through that shot. So lock that wrist. Second thing is you want your paddle tip to start up, okay? The shot doesn't start like this or with the paddle tip down. You really want that paddle tip up and the momentum of the swing actually comes from both arms doing work. So what I mean by that is you're gonna lead with both arms pulling out together. That's gonna really help you with timing and balance. If you're only using one hand, oftentimes it's gonna get you off balance. You're not gonna be able to use your timing correctly and it'll get really wristy. So it's really important that you use both hands in this shot. Have your non-dominant hand and dominant hand both move together through that shot. The swing path of this is going to look similar to what I like to say a Nike sign. A lot of people will get really choppy with this shot, meaning they'll just go like a straight line down, like a little karate chop. Let me tell you, that's not gonna help you get loft on the ball. Remember, part of the advantage to this shot is getting some loft on that ball, meaning you're gonna have to lift that ball up, okay? So it's really important that you start with your paddle tip up, again, lock that wrist, and you're coming down with the shot, and then swooping up like a Nike sign. Your follow through is gonna be where you're aiming that ball. All right, you guys, I wanna show you what this looks like in slow motion, just so you can see all these moving pieces working together. So the first thing happening is the prep. So that's having that paddle tip up, as well as moving your torso so that your shoulder is pointing where the ball is. Now this is where you wanna watch my arms. So they pull apart at the same time. It's really important you get that. Last thing is our contact, the ball out in front, weight is on that front foot at the point of contact, and then make sure that follow through is pointing where you want the ball to go. Here are a couple more shots in just real time. Again, a lot of it is just getting that timing and making sure that you're hitting on that front foot and using your body and momentum in the shot. 
So a great way to start practicing the technique at first is just to have both um, you and your feeders start at the kitchen line. What they're gonna do is they're gonna feed you balls until you can get all the way to the baseline and you're gonna be dropping all of it with your slice drop. So how it's gonna look is you're gonna start at the kitchen, hit three, again, really practicing that slice drop form. And then once you do three, you're going to back up and hit three from the next spot. You're gonna do this till you get all the way to the baseline. Again, really practicing your footwork, the swing mechanics, making sure that you're using your momentum into the shot, especially when you get back here to the baseline. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and do this, hit three from the baseline, and then you're gonna start working your way back up. You're gonna do this till you get all the way back up to the kitchen. And once you do that, you feel a little bit more comfortable, then we can move on to the drill. Okay, you guys, we are gonna go ahead and transition to the drill for this slice drop. So I like this drill, it's called around the world. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find the backhand side of the court. So whatever side of the court is your backhand side, this one's mine. So you're gonna have six stops around the world. We're only gonna be working on this half of the court. So stop number one is gonna be front corner, two, three, back corners, four, five, and then six back in the middle here. So what you're gonna be working on is shuffling from each location around the world and you're gonna be hitting a backhand slice drop. Okay, this is gonna force you to work on footwork as well as landing that drop in the opposite corner where your feeder is, okay? So really work on your technique, hitting a really good drop. If you miss a drop, I like to say you have to stay in that location in the world until you hit a good one, then you can continue the drill. Again, what's awesome about this drill is it actually helps you in that transition zone area because this is actually a great shot to use as a reset if you're caught in transition. So a way to make this hard is try to see how many times you can make it around the world without making a mistake. Keep track of your score, switch with your partner and see who wins. So make sure you guys try this out. If you have any tips that have helped you with the backhand drop, leave them in the comments below and if you have any suggestions for my next video i want to hear them make sure you follow me on instagram and tiktok at all things pickleball and i'll see you guys in the next one